If you're looking for a way to start doing dynamic blocks in AutoCAD, you've come to the right place. Let's get right into it. Okay, so once you open your drawing and you've created a block, if you don't know how to create a block, go check out our previous video on that. Uh, make sure you go watch that because it's going to have all the details about creating a block in AutoCAD because you need to have a block created to do this. So go create a block and then come back here. So once you have your block, you're going to use a command called B edit. So this is the block edit tool. So again, what you want to do is come down to your command bar, type in B edit. Uh, and then what you can do is we can move on. If you have your DYN mode set to three, you can just start typing. So uh, we type in B edit. And you can see we have the tool called B edit show up. So we're going to press enter. And then it's going to ask us uh, to edit the block definition. So what you want to do is you just want to select the, the block you have selected. You're going to click OK. And then we're going to be brought to our block editor. And this is where we're going to be able to add different commands to our block to make it dynamic. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If you're finding this tutorial helpful and you really like the content we produce, consider liking, subscribing, or even becoming a channel member. It really helps us get this free content out for you guys and it helps support us so that we can do this for you. If you're interested, go check out our AutoCAD web class. In this web class, we detail how you can start learning AutoCAD a better way, a structured way. I'm going to leave a link for that down in the description and also here, and we'll just continue on with the video right now. Okay, so now that we're in the block editor, what we need to do is we need to go to our parameters and set a linear parameter. So you can see over here, we have a few sections. We have parameters, actions, parameter sets, constraints. We want to deal with parameters and actions, and that's what most of you are probably going to use on a regular basis. You're not going to deal too much with the other ones. Um, I mean, you can see here there's parameter sets, but you know we're going to do it the good old fashioned way. So click parameters and click linear. So what you want to do is you want to put this in a location where it, it's going to you know, you're going to be able to pull it from that direction. And you're going to pull it where you want it to go. So in this case, I want to go from left to right or right to left or whatever. I'm going to click that and I'm going to make it make the make this as if I was making a dimension for my block. So you can see here it's a distance. And once that's done, you're going to see that we have it set and I can put as many as I want on here. So go do whatever you want and then come back to this. I recommend you do one so you don't get confused. And you're going to see here we have a little yellow box here and it's telling us, well, there's a problem. So we're going to right click on this and then we're going to go here to grip display. So grip display is going to show you what your, well, if where your grips and how your grips are going to display. Um, don't have it set to one, or sorry, don't have it set to zero. I'd recommend setting it to one first. So you can see here I have grip, I have one grip in this position and that's where I want it to go. However, you can see if I right click and I go back and I put two, I'm going to have two grips. So I'm going to be able to pull it this way and I'm going to be able to pull it this way. So this would be somewhat of a constraint in this case. So again, I want to pull it only from left to right. I don't want to pull it the other direction for, for, this, uh, for this example. So I'm just going to do one. Um, I could leave it as two, but in this case, we're just going to leave it where it is. Once that's done, we need to add an action to our parameter because right now all this is is it's just a distance with a grip. And when you're going to go back into your drawing with this block, it, it's going to do nothing. You're just going to be pulling nothing. So you want to go to your actions here and you want to add the action that you want. So you can scale, you can move, you can stretch, you can pull or stretch. There's all these different tools here, but we're going to do stretch. So we're going to click stretch and then it's going to want you to select a parameter. So the parameter we just set the distance, we're going to click on that. And then it's going to say specify parameter point to associate with the action or uh, enter the thing. So what we want to do now is we want to draw. Let me see here. I'm going to click here and then it's going to start drawing a box. OK, so what this box is is it's it's giving us the ability hold on i need to do that again so grab stretch select your parameter um specify the point so that's my my point and i'm going to specify the first corner of the stretch frame so i'm going to go over that again because i messed up a little bit so go to stretch select your parameter select where you want it to happen so this is one of the grips in my case it's this grip right here and you can see it's xed off we want to click that and then it's going to specify the stretch frame. So I'm going to click the stretch frame and I'm going to draw it down here. And this is going to allow me to select the objects within that frame. So what I want in this case is I want, I want this line and I want this line to be able to be stretched. So you can see here I have a rectangle. So we're going to see how that's going to work later on. But what you want to do is select the objects that you want stretched. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to click that. Once that's done, press enter and you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to stretch it. So once you're finished with that, we're going to go to our go to close our block editor. It's going to say the changes have not been saved. What do you want to do? I'm going to save the changes to my door. So now all my doors, I believe, have this. So I can click my door. You can see I can pull it 
And then I've got my door here and you can see I can pull it as well. So if I go here and I grab my grip, I can stretch my door out. So you can see here, it does work with the rectangle. It's perfectly fine. And you can see that my door, my, my arc and my rectangle are both stretching and doing exactly what I want to do. So that's how, that's like the basics of dynamic blocks. So what we need to do now is it's like, okay, David, that's great. We can stretch it, but what about other things we can do with this? That's what we're going to deal with right now. Okay, so we're going to go back into our block editor and we're going to create an array as a second example. So I'm going to select my block. I'm going to type in the edit once again, and then we're going to be brought to our edit block definition. We can just click okay and go, you know, into our actual block editor. But you're going to see here, there's a little lightning bolt near our door now, as there wasn't previously. This lightning bolt means that there is dynamic actions associated with this block. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a block that has, you know, dynamic output and one that does not. We're going to click okay. We're going to be brought back to our block editor and then we're going to start editing. So I'm going to put an array going up and down simply because I have an action going this way already. I'm going to tell you right now, you can put an array going this way, but it's going to be associated with stretch as well. Uh, and you have to make sure that, um, you know, the one that you have first is going to be the one that works. So that can be an issue that you run into. So if you are doing array, if you have multiple objects that go in the same direction, I highly recommend you have a different distance associated with it. So in this case, I would go to my linear and maybe I would put a distance, you know, that goes that goes here and it lines up with uh, with this one here. And then what I would do is then create an array with that. So keep that in mind. You know what? I'm actually going to do that as well. So we're actually going to do that. So we're going to take this. I was originally going to go up and down, but I guess going this way makes more sense because if I want to have doors that are spaced out properly, I can make this work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to go to my actions now and I'm going to go to my array. So I'm going to click my array. I'm going to select my parameter and then I'm going to select the objects associated with my parameter, which would be the whole thing. I'm going to press enter and it's going to say enter the distance between columns. So you need to go measure a few things for what you need. But what this is going to do is it's going to give you the distance between the objects. I believe it's from the center. So keep that in mind. I could be wrong, but I think it's from the center. You can make this distance anywhere. You can draw it out. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to make it, let's say, uh, I'll make it like 10 feet or whatever. You can also just type in the distance. I'm going to do 10 feet. And then we're going to have our array here. So you can see here our array is associated with this distance. And our stretch is associated with this distance. So the thing with the array is you can see here, I don't need to go and draw a box around it to stretch it. I can just go and stretch the objects I selected uh, into an array. So I can close my block editor, save the changes. And then when I click on that, you're gonna see I now have the ability to pull from that distance too. And you can see that all of these distances and everything, all your parameters are associated with where you put them in your block editor. So keep that in mind. One thing to mention too is I'm going to have to pull it 10 feet in order to see results because you're going to see here it's not just going to pull. I have to pull out to at least 10 feet in distance between them. And you can see here at 21 feet, I have 10 feet of distance between my objects. And I can just keep pulling and my array can be created that way. You can see if I pull it backwards, it's not going to work. Uh, and again, that's just because of the way I have it set up, but you can make it go in the other direction as well because it's all associated with this one here. Um, I go here, but if I click on this one, then it will, it'll allow me to just, uh, you know, move the object, but I can't actually adjust it from there. So if I go here again, I can pull it and that's my array. I can also do an array this way, this way, and this way, but that's how you do a basic array, uh, for dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. All right, guys, I have one more example for you and we're back in the block editor and I'm just going to go to my parameters and we're going to make a rotation for our object here. So what I want to do is I want to click on the rotation and it's going to want me to specify a base point. So when you're doing a rotation with a dynamic block, you want to have it so that your base point is where you're most likely going to want it to rotate. I can have multiple base points. I can have multiple actions associated with different base points. So I can put one here. I can put one here. I can put one here. I can put one pretty much wherever I want and rotate it based on that location at any time. So I could do four, I could do five, one in each corner, whatever. I'm just going to do right here. And that's going to say specify the radius of the parameter. So um, in this case, the radius of my parameter, I'm just going to pull it up to here. So we're going to do that. And then you're going to see that it's going to want an angle for that. So you can see here, it's going to say, okay, what, well, what angle do you want for your rotation? Uh, I'm just going to do 90 degrees. I'm going to pull it out and, and you can make your, your, your label go kind of wherever you want it. So I'm just going to go here, put my label there, and then we have our parameters set for the rotation. And you do this as many times as you want a rotation. You click actions, and then you're going to have to add the rotate command. So we're going to click rotate. 
we're going to select our parameter, and then we're going to select all the objects that we want with that parameter. So we're going to select the entire object here. We're going to press enter, and we're ready to rotate. So once that's done, once again, close the block editor, save the changes, and then we're brought back to our block here. And you can see we now have this little dot right here. So this dot here is what allows us to rotate, and you can see it's based on the rotation angle that we set before. So make sure that you have that set, but it doesn't, it's not too um, consequential how big or small it is, because you can see I didn't really think about mine and it's working fine, but it's rotating based on that point that I wanted it to, and it's going based on what I need it to be. So that's where my point is. I could have moved it or shifted it, but that's okay. And you can see I can rotate, I can turn it upside down. And then this is something that we can do as well, um, where, you know, I can, I can also go, you, can, you know, I can move it around. Um, you know, I can pull my array also. I flipped it, I pulled the array, and now it's the other way. And you can see everything kind of works with that as well. And you can see I can stretch it too. Um, but make sure that when you're doing this that uh, you can see because it's rotated, my stretch is kind of messed up. But you can use all the other parameters as well. So make sure that that is taken into account as well. So guys, hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you liked it, then uh, you know make sure to let us know and we'll see you in the next one.